Okay, this is a first look at another prototype plane that I have ready to put in the air. Now, my bush plane prototype didn't go so well, but it was a learning experience and it was my first design and build of a bush plane. So at the time that I was creating the plans for that plane, I was also creating the plans for the sport plane because this is another traditional type of plane that I wanted to design and build and I used a different build technique for this plane. This is, this is a technique I've wanted to use for a long time. And so I finally set aside time to do it. So it's kind of, it's a hybrid, it's a hybrid um, profile plane. I mean, profile planes are nice because they're very simple to build. They don't take much material. They're very lightweight. You can make them with a fairly large wingspan and still keep them under 250 grams. But the thing that I don't like about profile planes is all your electronics are exposed. You know, your battery, your receiver, your gyro, your servos, all that stuff. It's all exposed, your ESC. And so I wanted to build a profile type plane, but I wanted to have all my electronics enclosed inside the fuselage. So that's the way I built it. So I built it in layers and I've got two side panels on it that house, you know, all my electronics other than the, the uh, servos for the rudder and the elevator. I have um, independent servos for the ailerons. So my, I have a bimay gyro in it. So my gyro, my ESC, my receiver, my battery, everything is housed inside the fuselage everything is enclosed inside the fuselage the fuselage is you know so it's very narrow i made it as narrow as i could and also get all my components inside the fuselage so it should have very little drag you know it should cut through the air pretty well the airfoil i decided to go with is similar to what i use for my park jets I use either a kf2 or a kf4 airfoil this one just has a KF2 airfoil on it. I wanted to see how that worked out first and um, if it flies well and it's aerobatic and the rolls are nice and tight and axial, um, if, if it performs the way I want it to perform and it's very stable, I will leave it as a KF2 airfoil. So let me give you the specs here of all the electronics that I've got in it. The wingspan on the plane is 610 millimeters, that's 24 inch in the old money. The length is approximately 650 millimeters from the front of the prop to the end of the rudder or the end of the elevator. And the height is approximately 150 millimeters, not counting the landing skids, just the bottom of the fuselage to the top of the rudder, a, a vertical stabilizer is 150 millimeters which is uh, six inches in the old money the length is as i stated was 650 millimeters which is 26 inches in the old money so it's just slightly longer than it is wide with the wingspan the electronic side decided to use with it is a beta fpv 1805 1550 kv motor um, i've got two millimeter bullets on it the motor is rated for a 2s to a 6s i'm going to be flying it in it on its maiden flight with a 3S LiPo. The prop that I've got installed on it is a Gem Fan 8x4 two blade ABS prop that has a three millimeter hub, diameter hub on it. So this Beta FPV motor is a T-mount motor. So the, the uh, center shaft is very short and it's only a millimeter and a half. So what I used was I used one of these E-Flight adapters that will go from 1.5 millimeter to a 3 millimeter shaft, which works perfect with this Gem Fan prop that has a 3 millimeter shaft. So I've, I've used this setup before with this motor. Uh, that's what I have installed on the um, Aeros Pioneer that has unlimited vertical now. That's exactly the same type of setup I used on it, except it is spinning a uh, I think it's a 7x3.8 slow fly prop on 2S, and this one is spinning an 8x4 on a 3S, and this is a non-slow fly prop. All right, so the receiver, 
that I decided to go with is, is one that I've used in several planes now. It's always proven to be extremely reliable. It's a diversity, very tiny, very lightweight S-Bus PPM receiver. It's a WFLY RF201S. And another thing that I like about that receiver is it doesn't require any RF frequency tuning. So um, I've got that installed in it. I've, I've done the range test on it, the range test, tested good. Uh, the bell safe, tested good. So if I have any radio problems, I should be good to go. At least the, everything will shut down, center up, and hopefully glide down if, if, if I have any problems. The servos that I have are the ones that I've wanted to have on hand in the past. I didn't realize I didn't have any. I used them in other projects. This, these are the Emacs ES9051 and they're 4.3 gram digital servos. So I've used four of those. Two for the ailerons, you know, independent servos for the ailerons, one for the rudder, one for the elevator. The LiPo that I'm going to be using is a GNB 3S 530 milliamp hour 90C LiPo, and it weighs 39 grams. So all the electronics weight came to 121.6 grams. I weighed everything individually. That's including the LiPo. The airframe with the motor mount, the control horns, and the control rods came in at 122 grams. So the all-up weight without the landing skids or the wing protectors is 243.6 grams, so sub-250 grams. Now, where I land, I have to have some kind of landing skid or landing gear and if I'm using landing skids, I also need wing protectors to keep the wings up off of that hard pack. That put my all up weight at 251.5 grams. So I'm a gram and a half over the 250 gram limit, but, and I'm not going to do this before I put it in the air the first time, but I can get it under 250 gram because I have got a ton of, of excess wiring and cabling that I've tucked inside this fuselage. I didn't, you know, I just left all the lengths of the cabling as they were after I connected all the components up. I didn't want to cut everything down to the length that I needed for this project until I was certain that the plane was going to fly and fly well. If after the maiden flight, it looks like the plane is going to fly and it's going to fly very well, I would assume, I would guess, that I could probably cut down the weight on this plane by four to five grams just removing all the wiring and the cabling, the excess wiring and the cabling, so that all the wiring and the cabling, including the, the, the cabling from the motor and the ESC, if I just cut those down to the, the length of wiring and cabling that I need, I think I'm going to easily be able to reduce the all up weight on this by four grams or maybe five grams. So I think that's going to work out really well. Um, I did build this aircraft very, very sturdy. It's got a lot of carbon reinforcement in the fuselage, in the horizontal stabilizer, the elevator, the vertical stabilizer. I'm not sure. I think that the rudder control surface is the only control surface that I do not have carbon reinforcement in. I've got carbon reinforcement almost the entire length of the fuselage. Uh, I use the plywood mount for the motor. I have carbon reinforcement on the back side of the wing, the front side of the wing. Let's hold it up here where you can see it. As well as across the length, length of the wing tip so that I'm not getting any flexion in that portion of the wing tip. Uh, you know, past, past where the ailerons are cut out. I just have the uh, servo since it's pretty, it's a pretty flat, you know, not very thick board except for the KF2 airfoils. So I've just got the 4.3 gram servos for the ailerons glued to the bottom side of it. I cut slots for the servos for the elevator and the rudder. And I also put in some plastic uh, wing tip protectors so I'm not dragging the wing tips on the ground when I land. The um, landing skids are just made out of um, zip tie, a, a larger, thicker zip tie in the front, a smaller one in the back. And, and the back it's just a, like a half a loop and in the front it's a full loop. 
the the uh, panels that enclose all the electronics are um, three millimeter balls of wood. I think when I rebuild it, I'm just going to use foam or or, a sh or very thin, very lightweight plastic. But uh, that's what I use, and I've just got rubber bands to, to hold both panels together. So uh, hopefully that'll work out. Um, you know, the, looking at the thrust numbers with this power system, it should have pretty good power. The question is how much flight time I'm going to get with that small 3S LiPo. Uh, also to see if the balance is good. It's not as heavy. It's not tail heavy. So I will be putting this in the air very, very soon, guys. So uh, stay tuned. Um, I'll be posting the maiden flight, whether it's good or whether it's bad, just like with the, uh, the prototype bush plane that I had. So I'm hoping that this will work out really, really well. So thanks for watching, and I will see you in the air.